Hey guys, it's Jake O'Donnell here, welcome back to my channel. So today I thought I'd talk a little bit about some of the techniques I use in order to give my photos a more vintage edit when I'm preparing them for export to a format like Instagram. Now vintage editing tends to be very popular these days, I think partly because of its nostalgic factor and also partly because it tends to remove a lot of the starkness and staleness that you get from a straight out of camera digital photograph. I think the beauty of what comes with a lot of the vintage style of photography, for example through techniques and formats like Polaroids, is that there is a element of a lack of control in terms of the end result. You get floors with lighting with flares, film dust, scratches, burns, chemical errors and that sort of thing, which produce a very unique, raw and textured visual quality to the photograph when it's done. Now there are certain techniques that I implement through Photoshop to add those different raw elements like scratches and flares. So today I thought using one of my photos of model Josh Ivory, I'd demonstrate a couple of those techniques to you so that you can implement them into your photographic process and see if they are helpful to you. Now I've just gone ahead and opened the photo as a smart object in Photoshop. One of the first things I would do for a vintage edit, kind of like a base plate, is to add some noise to the photo. This is the kind of grain that you would get from using a high ISO or from certain film speeds in an analog camera. And it adds a little bit of grit and texture to a photo which tends to even out the tones a little bit and just give it more of that older, less technically advanced feel. Now, this photo already has some grain inserted into it because I like to give a little bit of visual texture to areas that fall out of focus from a shallow depth of field so that they don't look too crisp. But I'm going to show you how to do it anyway. Film grain can be added with a fair degree of control in Lightroom, but the beauty of doing it in Photoshop is that you can mask out areas that are too destructive to detail so that you can keep the overall effect without being bound by being forced to make universal changes. So the first thing that we're going to do is Command J to duplicate the layer and then we can go up to filter and then we go into the noise gallery and select add noise and that gives us a certain degree of control using the slider to add some noise or not. Only a very slight amount I think here because like I said I've already added some just to demonstrate the effect. I usually keep it monochromatic too because that way it doesn't discolor the darker areas of the photo and we're gonna go okay. Now like I mentioned the beauty of having done this is for example we're losing a lot of detail through the hair and the face here. If I click this button to create a layer mask and then I select a soft brush with uh, the black color selected and then reduce the opacity so that the effect isn't too intense we can actually mask areas to remove grain from that specific area without taking it away from the broader image itself obviously using a soft edge brush is a good idea because that way the transition of the effect is difficult to notice and so you'll be able to use it to emphasize areas of detail that will emerge out of the hazier grain to help direct your viewer's attention to specific focal points within the image. One of my next favorite techniques to give a photo a bit more of a vintage quality is to add a sun flare. And I think giving photos that old summer haze, that warm summer glow really helps to give them that old school nostalgic feeling by making them synonymous with all those warm hazy memories of summers growing up and just kind of the attractive, warm, pleasant feeling they seem to provide a photo. They're also really helpful in situations like this where the composition is set up to allow a receding depth or the model is looking in a particular direction because flares can be used to enhance an existing sunset or to create one where one didn't exist so that we're able to establish a purpose for the direction of the model's attention and then to give an overall narrative to the photo that's stronger than the pre-existing one. So you can see that when I 
turn the visibility of this layer on and off. We're able to see what the photo looked like before and after the addition of the flare. And I think particularly where it glows over the grass here, it really adds a strength to the image that wasn't there before. So how we do that on our working photo here, even though the sun already did flare a fair bit naturally, is that we need to collect a flare from somewhere. Now you can find flares, film burns, and all the other things I'm going to show you online, or you can create them yourself, scanning the dust on a scanner, using a big soft edge brush to create a flare. Um, but once you have one, use the selection tool to drag it and then release it into your photo. Now, the key with adding things like this into your work is blend modes, and they are an absolute savior for making things like this very easy. Once we've sized it to an appropriate size there, um, we go over here once the layer is selected, and the purpose of blend modes is for Photoshop to automatically remove a particular color from a layer or image by identifying it and making it visible. So in this area, these tend to remove the darker colors and screen removes blacks. So if we select that straight away, we've eliminated all the black from that layer and we now have only the flare itself left. So we can place that in the appropriate spot and then resizing it gives us a lot of overhang. When flares occur naturally in photos, the haze tends to bleed over the subject like this reduce the contrast, which is why a lot of lenses that are made these days tend to be designed to prevent flare, but older lenses you get this effect a lot more intensely. But what it does is it just emphasizes the quality of the sun, fades out across the pic, adds an extra dimension of color. When you have flares like this, just like we did with the noise, sometimes you might have an edge where it wasn't entirely removed, and you can just add another layer mask and easily fade that out so that the transition of the fading light is gradual and has then a very natural presence in your photo overall. So the next technique we're going to try in this photo is to add some dust and scratches to really give it that aged quality and also the lines and marks that that filter are going to add help to direct the composition and also it can fill some negative space that might exist in your photo if it feels a bit awkward or empty in certain places but it just gives it that overall olden feel that helps to service creating that vintage mood. So what we do is we grab a layer that looks like this, something that has all the scratches and dust particles which you can find online, places like Tumblr, Pinterest or wherever. And just like the flare, we then drag that to our working image and then using Command T to select the free transform mode we can then position it across our photo, resizing it, and it should correct its resolution once we accept that change. And there we go, fit that into place. And again, just like the flare, we can use the blend mode to remove the darker areas in this layer so that only the scratches are present. So because most of this is black, we'll select screen again, and that brings us to here. Now there's a lot of mottling in this, which you may not necessarily be a fan of. So when you're using blend modes and you have a result like that, what you can do is go up to image, then adjustments and levels, and this allows you to control the amount of darkness and light in a particular layer. So by bringing up the deep shadows, you can see that you increase the amount of the image which is dark and therefore removed by the screen mode. So you just drag that up until you reach a point you're happy with, which I'd say is about there, maybe here, click OK. And then just to refine that effect, you can play it with the opacity of the layer to determine the harshness of those scratches, or even if they've appeared in places that you don't particularly like them, use another layer mask to fade out the artifacts when they land in areas which you don't like. The final technique I might try with a photo like this, and this is where you can get really creative, is to insert any kind of light or burn artifact whatsoever and use the blend modes to create shapes which can then fill negative spaces or be framing devices in your photo. So here's a film burn that I occasionally use. 
and if we oops, bring that into here, resize it to something that will fit the frame. I typically like to use ones that create lines over the edge of photos because then it again has that sort of aged effect. And then we select the appropriate blend mode. We now have a sort of burn or a stain on the photo that looks like old, a bit damaged, which again helps just to create the overall vintage feel that we were going for. And I think also it's a nice compositional device in terms of boxing Josh here between a range of visual elements that allow the eye to move around the photo in a nice segmented sort of way. And again, you can use the opacity or layer masks to customize that adjustment however you like and to set it up to be a very precise, personalized vintage edit once you combine a little bit of all these ideas. So now that I've saved the file back to Lightroom, we can scroll back and forth to see the end result of what the edits collectively do to the photo. Now we can put them side by side. And here you go. My one piece of advice with editing like this though, to achieve a believable result, is to ensure that you only end up applying these edits to photos that justify them, whether by the aesthetic or the quality of the lighting, so that you're able to produce an image that actually genuinely does have that vintage quality by looking like these effects are natural. Particularly with the placement of flares, I would recommend only placing them where the lighting actually looks like it could create a flare and that way you end up with the most believable result in terms of the direction and the intensity of the light. Now, if you enjoyed this video and liked seeing these editing techniques, please don't forget to give me a big thumbs up and please subscribe as it helps my channel to grow. And if you have any questions or any other ideas of what videos you'd like to see next, any other editing or shooting techniques or behind the scenes stuff that you would like to see, please drop a comment below so that I can get in touch with you all and hear about what you would like to see from me in my next video. Lots of new content coming soon, so it would be great to hear some new ideas. So that's all for today. Thank you for watching.